In this video we're going to be talking about best practices for packaging a mobile track recorder if you're selling it through eBay or donating it to a friend and it's got to go in the post. Our test subject here is a Tascam 688. Here's a sense of scale, how huge this beast is. The reason this is already packaged is it's got a fault with the mixer. It's got a digital system for assigning channels to tape buses, which I think is faulty. Transport works fine. There's no missing knobs or anything. It takes up a lot of space. I thought I'd sell it on the spares and then I got as far as listing it on eBay, packaging it ready for sale. Hey, check out my Crocs. My stripy socks. What's happened recently is an acquaintance of mine, he's got one that's got different problems to mine. His transport doesn't work, mine does. His mixer does work, mine doesn't. So we're, we're doing a deal where I'm going to take the transport and the speed control board out of this and send it to him and then we'll hopefully get one working unit and share on the profits together. Um, so anyway, here's one that I packaged earlier. I'm going to open this up and show you how I go about it. Because when you're selling this stuff, in a perfect world, the couriers would treat these things with utmost respect. That's not really what happens. And you'll find that most couriers, even if you take out insurance, they'll try and wriggle out of it if it gets damaged in transit. Um, you'll see this inside here, but basically I try and get a tight-fitting box and then some packaging and then another box. So it's double box and I try and have like at least an inch, two inches of padding of some kind around that, usually large bubble wrap. I will put some kind of waterproof layer around it and clearly mark it as fragile. So I'll pause just now and come back when I've got this open a bit. So I've just cut away this outer layer that I've made from a couple of really huge mailing bags. And you can see the first layer of cardboard. If memory serves inside here, we've got a few boxes cobbled together, but there is this outer one, which is about the right size. It's an Amazon Prime one. It's not very strong in and of itself, but the point here is to have it's layers of cushioning. It's like airbag if you bash your head in a car. It's meant to absorb damage if, you know, something gets dropped onto there or the whole package gets dropped. And then inside, you can see got a little bit of extra cardboard. It won't reduce any impact on here, but you can see I've got a few cut up banana boxes. And they've got a lot of structural strength. You've got to think that when they you've got soft fruit that's weighing like five, six kilograms and they're stacked on top of each other. I mean, I actually work part time as a cleaner in a supermarket. So, you know, you'll see like eight, ten of these boxes come in in a metal cage. So that they have a lot of structural strength. So that's what I tend to use, especially around corners. Usually what I would do is I would have a layer of bubble wrap around the unit itself and then this and then bubble wrap around that and then another box on the outside of that. It looks like just due to the size of the unit, I've made a bit of a compromise in this case. But if you've got a sufficiently large outer box, then I would recommend an extra layer of bubble wrap around there. Disassemble this a bit more. So this is the side that's got the knobs on it. You can see I've had that sitting on a cushion of packing paper to protect the knobs and also to bring up the overall height of the package to completely fill the box. You don't want any empty space where it can rattle around inside that's going to make it more likely to be damaged and it gives an excuse to the courier's claims insurance department to renege on paying out your insurance if you're unfortunate enough that something happens to it in transit. Um, I won't bother a time lapse me taking off all the bubble wrap, but you can see I've got like a few rolls worth here. I tend to buy like rolls 50 meters at a time. Um, I'll come back once I've got all this off. Okay, so that's the 688 out of its packaging there. That gives you an idea of the quantity of bubble wrap that I used. Anyway, I hope that helped give you some idea of the lengths you want to be going to to try and package one of these guys.